Okay, so today I wanted to share with you my setup for teaching online. As a visual artist, I have been live streaming and also teaching live online classes for the last five or six months. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an expert at this, but I feel like I've gotten a few things figured out. And over the last five or six months, I've had several folks, actually I've had many folks, kind of ask me about my setup. And simply, I use a two camera system that allows me to easily switch between talking to you, talking to the camera like I am now and switching over to showing what's on my workspace. So I can do that and switch back and forth very easily, very quickly. And it allows for just a much better virtual experience. So whether I'm live streaming or whether I'm teaching online, um, I can kind of do the same thing. So I wanted to talk about my setup, uh, talk about the equipment that I have, how I have it set up, and then talk a little bit about the software and the apps that I use that allow me to easily, easily switch over from um, one camera to another. So first of all, it all starts with the computer. Now I'm a Mac guy. I have been for a really long time. So um, when I first started doing live streams and online classes, I was just using a six year old MacBook Pro um, where the memory was almost full. It was really kind of slow, but it did the job. It, it, it worked pretty well. Um, every once in a while there might be a little glitch and, and things wouldn't work out quite as well. So I was very fortunate I was able to upgrade. So I got a better MacBook Pro, a bigger, faster, um, uh, more powerful uh, computer. But the, the big thing is that the computer has a built-in camera, and that's what I'm using right now to, to speak to you. And so I can use the the, the computer to control the cameras, control the software, control the apps, and switch back and forth. Um, and so I just really wanted to make sure that I had a powerful, uh, fast computer that could handle all of the processing of the video, of, of the video and, the, and the sound and everything like that. Um, so that's the first thing. You got to have a, a decent computer. I mean, just something that's going, going to allow you to, to, to get online and to hook up a couple different cameras um, or have a built-in camera, should I say. Um, and so, again, it's, it, it allows me to switch back and forth. But when, I, when I'm working with it, I do set it up a little bit higher so that it's more on eye level and you're not looking up my nose. That's not very, very pleasant. So you have a, a bit more of a straight on shot because I set the computer up so that the camera is about my eye level and it just makes it a, a better experience for those people that are kind of tuning in. Um, so that's the first camera. Now, the second camera is a web camera. It's just a simple, inexpensive web camera. Uh, I've been using a, a Logitech C920 HD Pro camera, and I got this a couple years ago, and it still works really great. The nice thing is it has a nice long USB cord, and it's a very small, lightweight camera. So then I just hook it up to an articulated arm. And this articulated arm just basically is like a little crane that I can raise and lower. And I can, I can do that pretty quickly, so I can set it to any height that I need. So if I need to zoom in on something that I'm demonstrating, I can set it that way. If I need it to be a little bit higher, I can set it that way as well. Um, and so the articulated arm, I use an impact uh, three-section um, articulated arm that I got from a, a photography store. And it's, it's pretty heavy duty, it's pretty beefy for what I really need. But if I ever wanna to upgrade to a bigger, better camera um, in the future, then this arm will definitely, definitely um, be helpful. But you can find all kind of different variations of this um, on the internet and, and find out something that would work for you. But um, so this web camera, it's an HD camera, and that's what I use to point down at my workspace so that I can demonstrate what I want to demonstrate. So as a visual artist trying to show visual technique or working with different materials, it's really important that people can see me working without me needing to rearrange a whole bunch of stuff. So having that second camera, that's what really allows me to switch back and forth between, um, you know, to get those different views. So that way I can talk to you or I can show people what I'm working on. 
Okay, so that's the, the, the basics. Now I do round out my setup with an external microphone. Um, I use a blue Snowball Ice microphone. It's a bit bulky. Um, I got it a long time ago and I've used it for, um, for quite a while now. And I even use it for recording my podcast. But it's a good quality microphone. It records well. The sound is good. Um, the, the problem is like with built-in microphones, a lot of times they just don't capture the sound very well. Um, you know, it, it, they're, they're kind of hit or miss. Sometimes the cameras have a, a pretty good built-in one, so you can always explore and experiment and see what works. But um, having some good quality external microphone is always handy just to make sure that your sound quality is consistent and, and good. You want people to be able to hear you. Um, and then I round out my setup with studio lights. You got to have yourself lit up and you've got to have your workspace lit up as well. I just use some very standard studio lights that I've had in my studio for years and years and years. Um, I'm always trying to think about money. I don't want to buy some super expensive professional lighting kit uh, when I just have a couple lights that could work. So I have two lights set up. One kind of shines in this way on me and the kind of that's the filler light and then I have the main light the key light coming in um, from this side so it's just a nice even lighting and it also doubles and, and lights up my workspace that's right here in front of me um, and these are just standard studio lights that I got from like an art store um, the tall metal ones um, and I just put in a couple very bright daylight bulbs in them seems to do the trick uh, one day I, I really hope to to upgrade my system and get better lighting, um, get something a bit more professional. But you know, hey, this is working for me now and it could work for you as well. Um, so that kind of really wraps up my space uh, other than, you know, I have a nice little table that I work on and allows me to have the, the articulated arm clamped to the back, has enough room for me to set up the computer um, and it has, has enough space where I can kind of work and do the thing that I want to do um, and so that's that's kind of my physical setup okay uh, now you have to have the right software the right app the right stuff the right platform on your computer because not all virtual platforms are created equal not all of them have it built in where you can switch back and forth through cameras uh, back and forth between cameras so um, I've only done some live streaming through Facebook and I've only used Zoom. Zoom is the, the key thing that I've used for my online classes, but I, I have the ability, the freedom to pick because I'm doing online classes uh, for myself and by myself, and so I don't have a school system, I don't have uh, anybody else dictating what platform I use. Um, but let's talk about live streaming first. So uh, if I were to live stream directly to Facebook, I can only use one camera. You can only set up one camera to use directly with Facebook. So there's a, a software out there. It's called Open Broadcast Software. It's a free software that uh, it's open. So a lot of people have contributed to it and it works great. It's, it's the go-to for streaming, um, partly because it's free. And then it just it's pretty easy to use once you get it set up. I'm not going to go into how you how to set it up. But the nice thing is that you can set it up so that you have multiple cameras, like even if more than two, I only use two, but if you have three or four cameras, you could set it up um, so that you can easily switch back and forth between the cameras. But you can also set up images, which is great if you wanna have like a title slide um, or if you're live streaming, you can always put in there, you know, the live stream will start soon. Um, and then you can always have kind of an ending slide, an ending title, so that you can like have some credits or put out some information. Um, and that's what's great. You know, like you, you can do all that in that software and it's a go between. It goes between Facebook and, and your computer. Um, so that way you switch back and forth in the software and then that conveys it to, uh, to um, Facebook. So real simple, real easy to use. Um, and the nice thing is you don't have to use it just for live streaming. You could just record directly. So you can kind of set up a title. You could set up an end. You can set up all kind of different things with it. Do your recording, do your demonstration, and then it's all done in one shot. There's no need to edit because 
you've kind of edited it as you've gone along and you can kind of have a more professional, easier to kind of uh, use presentation. So you can do pre-recorded presentations with it as well. Um, so that's the live streaming. And then for online classes, like I've said, I use Zoom. Now, I started using Zoom just because I had the free account, but I did upgrade because I do classes that are more than an hour long. Um, so it's inexpensive. Uh, you can get a yearly plan, you can pay it uh, monthly. Um, but the, the reason I use Zoom is that it is pretty easy to use. A lot of people are familiar with it. It's what a lot of uh, businesses are using. Um, so a lot of my students are already familiar with it and they come in, they already know how to use it. Zoom's used a lot. I know it had some issues that um, had a lot of privacy and security issues. They've kind of worked through a lot of that and I haven't had any problems of Zoom bombers coming in and, and ruining it because I do set up with a password with a unique um, meeting number um, and so I, I don't have that issue and I only send out the link privately through emails. I don't post it or publish it um, on the internet for anybody to find. So <clears throat> I use Zoom and the nice thing about Zoom is that again you can go in and you can switch between the cameras. There's a real easy way. You just go down by the little camera icon and you click the arrow and there it is. You can switch back and forth. So that way I can be demonstrating one second and then when I'm done demonstrating I switch back and I can talk to um, the people that I'm teaching. And it's just it's a great live experience. So it just makes me feel like I'm talking to the viewer. I'm talking to my students and not like they're not staring at my hands while I'm talking. And uh, so just that ease of use of being able to switch back and forth um, really is just a simple, simple way. Now, that, that's because of that second camera, that, that webcam that I have. Uh, now, not, not everyone has a webcam. You might not be able to get one, um, or maybe you can't get one to work with your computer. So some folks have been able to use a phone or a tablet. And I guess there's some app or something that you can download that allows you to use your camera. Now, what I like about having the camera directly connected to the computer is that I can switch back and forth. I don't have to sign in with my device and with my computer and sort of switch back and forth and worry about, you know, basically my, my phone is, is or my uh, tablet would be signed in as a guest or as a, a, another student. Um, I don't have that issue with my setup. So if there's a way to directly connect the camera to your computer, you can easily switch back and forth. So um, yeah, I have never used the phone, haven't used a tablet, so um, there might be a way to, to use it as a second camera, but I'm not 100% certain with that. So you'd have to kind of check that out. All right, now Zoom, you can also use it to just record a basic presentation to do a pre-recorded a class or lesson or um, uh, presentation. Uh, you just basically open up an empty Zoom meeting and then you're able to record it. Um, and then you can switch back and forth. Um, so again, you can kind of create something where you wouldn't have to do a lot of editing and putting together all these different multiple views and uh, different uh, video things. So um, that's always a possibility as well. So um, yeah, so I use Zoom uh, for my live in uh, live online classes and I use the open broadcast software for live streaming. Um, and it just kind of makes the experience a little bit more professional, a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective, hopefully. Um, so that's kind of that's my setup. It's it's not it's nothing all that grand. Um, it sort of I've kind of put it together over over the last few months, and it seems to work. Um, so hopefully it, it works for you, um, or hopefully you got some good ideas at least from from what I've shared with you. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions make sure you leave them in the comments below. Um, and then of course, hey, I'd love for you to subscribe. I've got other videos, so you can subscribe. And of course, you can always check out my other videos. So um, thank you, hope you got something from it and uh, see you next time.